Throughout the offseason, the hype around Jordan Love has risen. One of the things they have proven is they kind of know when they've got a young quarterback who's ready to play. And the things I'm hearing is that they have one right now. But then there's this to keep in mind. You know, it is what it is. And at the same time, we're excited about Jordan. And, you know, it's going to be a, a different role for him, certainly. And I think we all have to kind of temper our expectations with, you know, for him. In reality, the truth lies somewhere between the managed expectations that Matt LaFleur set and the hype that the, the fans and even some national media have kind of conjured up around Jordan Love. So I took a mathematical approach to it. I looked at his career numbers versus the opportunity that is in front of him here. But before we get into that, I want to look at what one Aaron Charles Rogers was able to do in 2022 and put that as a little bit of a frame around what we might expect from Jordan Love in 2023. So Aaron Rodgers went 350 for 542 attempts, throwing for 3,695 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. The interesting thing about that stat line is that if you look at 2008, his first year as a starter, it's a relatively similar stat line. In 2008, mind you, before Aaron Rodgers was you know, presumed first ballot Hall of Famer, multiple time MVP, he went 341 for 536 attempts, you know, a similar completion percentage, 1% exactly lower, throwing for 4,045 yards with 28 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. Actually, slightly better season, all things considered. So that just kind of goes to show that Jordan Love's first year as a starter, he could do a very similar stat line to what Aaron Rodgers put up this past year. First year starter. Jordan Love can do the same thing this year. So let's start by looking at 2022, for example. How many opportunities did the quarterback have to throw the ball? On average, we threw the ball 33 times per game. That's a little low compared to the average for the entire Matt LaFleur era, which really came out to 35 attempts per game. Marginal difference but we'll use both of those numbers to create a bit of a range of opportunity by you know, pass attempt. From there, I looked at Jordan Love's stats holistically from the entirety of his career, which granted he's only played you know, regular season time in two seasons, that's 2021 and 2022, but I looked at that holistically. And then I also looked at last year on, on its own in a, in a vacuum a bit, just to kind of account for the progression that he made from you know year two to year three, which when you watch the, the film and you look at the stats, it stands out. The difference in you know his comfortability and his performance while he was in the games. So that also gives us another aspect that we can kind of account into a range here from you know the overall average performance of his career, which was admittedly a little bit lower than his performance last year alone so that creates that range and then on top of that to add a little bit more of a range to this projection pff accounts for an adjusted completion percentage that number takes into account you know on target throws that were dropped as well as throws that weren't really an intended target that that weren't aimed it was just kind of takes away the throwaways and things like that under pressure and for that metric, in 2022, Jordan Love's stat was just unsustainable. So I kind of threw that out and baselined it a little bit. His adjusted completion percentage in 2022 was 85%. The highest a quarterback has ever had for an entire season as a completion percentage was 74.4, I believe, which was Drew Brees. Throughout history, there's only been 18 seasons where a quarterback has had over a 70% completion percentage. So I kind of lowered that down to 70%, which is still a little bit of a high-end projection for his completion percentage, but it'll also give us a range from what his average was, which was 62.4% completions over the entirety of his career. In 2021, he got the most action he's had so far in his career. Of course, because Aaron Rodgers had to miss the Chiefs game with COVID, so he, he got to start. Granted, consider 
you know, most of that week, they were still hopeful that Rodgers was going to clear COVID protocols and be able to play in that game. So he didn't get a full week of you know, game planning and prep. So the game plan wasn't developed specifically for Jordan Love. They went in and it's pretty obvious that Matt LaFleur didn't really change any of the scheme and the way they approached the game, hoping that Jordan Love would just kind of fit in seamlessly within a scheme built for Aaron Rodgers, which for his first career start wasn't really reasonable to expect. And on top of that, you know, the pressure that he saw from the Chiefs defense and Steve Spagnuolo was through the roof. And that pressure showed up really in his 2021 stats where on 70 dropbacks, he was pressured 25 times, which is just an insane rate. One thing about that stat to be optimistic about though, is that even with 25 pressures, Love only allowed a pressure to sack rate of 12%. That's 8% lower than what Aaron Rodgers allowed in 2022. So first career start, facing a lot of pressure, Sure, there was probably a little a little bit of an uptick in his turnover where he plays because of that stat or because of those you know that pressure that he faced against the Chiefs, but that's to be expected in his first career start too, as he's learning to deal with you know the pressure and then on top of that he probably didn't have you know adequate reps really making adjustments to protection at the line as well. So those are things that he can grow and develop from, and hopefully that'll reduce some of those turnover where he plays, but then also sustain a a better rate of pressure to sacks. But all of that aside, you know, here were the numbers that he put up in 2021. He went 36 for 62, which is a 58.1% completion percentage. You know, not exactly ideal, but it's it's not far off. It's within striking range. And then he put up 411 yards with uh, two touchdowns and three interceptions. Again, not ideal touchdown to interception ratio again some of that probably contributes to the pressure that he faced but as you look at 2022 those numbers vastly improved as you know granted much smaller sample size but he went 14 for 21 which is a 66.7 percent completion percentage for 195 yards one touchdown with zero interceptions on that note also pff has a big time throw metric and his big time throw percentage was 4.8, which was almost two and a half times better than it was the year before. And on top of that, he didn't have any turnover worthy plays on those 21 dropbacks. And he had a drop rate from his receivers of 17.6%, which really contributes to that adjusted completion percentage that I spoke about earlier. So you push all those numbers together and that's how we kind of came up to these projections. Overall, what I'm projecting Jordan Love to have for a season is somewhere between 351 to 425 completions for somewhere between 2,790 yards and 3,952 yards for 21 to 32 touchdowns and between 11 and 20 interceptions. All right, now you might ask, how did I get to those numbers? So I took the completion percentage average from both seasons as well as just the completion percentage from last year then I took the adjusted completion percentage from both and then as well as last year and I took those completion percentages and I multiplied that by the average number of attempts both the 33 per season as we had last year and the 35 that we've averaged throughout the Matt LaFleur era So that's how we got our yards. From there for touchdowns, I took however many total attempts he had had so far, and I divided the number of touchdowns that he had scored so far. So basically, one in every 16 completions turned out to be a touchdown. So that's how I did the touchdown metric there. Um, And again, that's variant based on the number of completions from, you know, the average of 33 per game to the average of 35 per game, which is how you get a little bit of a range from uh, 21 to 35. And completion percentage also accounts for that as well. Now for interceptions, I use the turnover with the play metric that PFF has, and uh, I average that right around to 4%. Um, 
which then you multiplied that 4% by the number of attempts, and that's how we ended up with uh, the number somewhere between uh, 11 and 20. And to keep in mind with that, the most interceptions thrown last year were by Josh Allen and Dak Prescott, both of whom threw 17. Dak Prescott had a 3.8% turnover-worthy play metric, and Josh Allen had a 42 so those average out to that 4% as well, and they capped out at 17 interceptions. Granted, Josh Allen on that side of things had a little bit more of a likelihood to fumble, which probably came into account with that turnover-worthy play as well. So he might have been a little high on the interceptions by that metric. But 17 is probably where I would say the cap is for interceptions. 20 is probably a little bit high. So I would probably assess that to be a little bit lower, sometime somewhere between 15 and 17 interceptions based on this turnover-worthy play percentage. But why don't we add in a little bit of context for some other players that have you know, taken over there as their first-year starter and had similar jumps. So why don't we look at Jalen Hurts to start? So obviously Jalen Hurts had an outstanding year, got super paid last year uh, because of it. So his first year as a full-time starter he went 288 for 475 attempts for 3,402 yards, 17 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. That average of you know yards per attempt was 7.2 that he had as well. So not unrealistic numbers, right in that range of what we kind of saw for Aaron Rodgers in his first year starting as well. All right, how about we look at Brock Purdy, you know, rookie quarterback, but similar system in the Shanahan style offense, which Matt LaFleur obviously runs a very similar system to, you know, in his, you know, not quite full season of playing, he put up 155 for 233 attempts with 1,943 yards, 16 touchdowns and four interceptions, averaging 8.3 yards per attempt. Take it one more step further with Tua Tagovailoa, and he, you know, granted, started the year before this one, but his first year in a Shanahan-style system with Mike McDaniel last year, he ended up going for 259 out of 400 attempts, 3,548 yards, 25 touchdowns, and eight interceptions, averaging 8.9 yards per attempt. So put all those things into context. It's not unrealistic to expect Jordan Love to have a big step forward. Is there a good likelihood that he's going to probably throw more interceptions than we're used to seeing than Aaron Rodgers? Of course. But Aaron Rodgers set essentially an immeasurable standard that next to nobody is able to maintain throughout the entirety of their career. So it would be unrealistic to expect that anyway. But, you know, this, this isn't to say that Jordan Love is, you know, is the next Aaron Rodgers or that he is Jalen Hurts or Tua Tagovailoa. That's not to say any of that. Jordan Love is going to show us what he actually is this year, but these are just some comparisons of those who have done it before him and how they performed in their first opportunity. Jordan Love's opportunity is going to be different. You know, he's got a young receiving core. He's got Matt LaFleur who will hopefully you know, scheme things up so that he is successful, but it's still ultimately a different situation. And how the defense plays will likely play into that as well, because if the offense is playing from behind trying to catch up, it's going to look different than if they're able to, you know, run their offensive scheme as they intend to because they're, you know, within reach in a game. But hey, let's look at those numbers one more time, and I'll give you my honest evaluation of where I expect those numbers to actually be. We're looking somewhere between 351 and 425 completions, 2,790 yards and 3,952 yards, 21 to 32 touchdowns, and 11 to 20 uh, interceptions. So for me, I think Jordan Love is going to complete somewhere around 400 passes, throw for probably 37, 3,800 yards. Um, with, I mean, I think he's going to be a little bit higher on the touchdown rate. So I think we're going to look at like 24 to 25 touchdowns and then somewhere in the 15 interception range. Not a bad first year start for Jordan Love. 
And I expect the Packers with that will be able to do something to remain in contention for the playoffs in his first year as starter. But like I said before, this isn't solely on Jordan Love. This is you know, based around their defense, the weapons that Jordan Love has. And if you want to know a little bit more of some of those weapons that he has, go ahead and click the video on the screen now. And uh, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future Packers analysis like this on my channel.